Hello everyone. Today, I'll be going over everything you would need to start your violin journey. This is Violin Episode 2. So, first I want to go over some announcements. I'm really sorry that I haven't been uploading uh, for quite some time. I, I've i been trying to record, but every time I, ke- I kept botching up the recording. And I have other stuff to do. And for the, anybody waiting for the math competition, um, I'll be I'll be uploading in a week or two because I really want to finish uh the violin tutorial first. So anyway, let's start. <clears throat> first, we will go over the violin case. This is the violin case. Uh, if you rent it, the one on the left is mine. It's a boxy case. I'll be telling you the difference uh in a second. And the one on the right is a shaped case. So you'll get either one if you rent a violin. If you buy one permanently, uh, you'll probably get a cloth one, but you might get a plastic one. So this is the inside of my boxy case. As you can see, I have my bow on the top, uh, violin and shoulder rest. So the difference between a boxy case and a, a shaped case is that a boxy case has more room. If you can see that, there's a flap right there, right? In my case, there's a flap on the very left. If you open that, it's like kind of like a space holder where I could keep my stuff, uh, like a pencil, my rosin, my cloth, uh, my violin, um, things I, I need to take care of my violin. But on a shaped, case there's not much space i don't know if you could see the flap um it's pretty blurry but i uh but there's a flap there and inside there's a very small compartment you could barely fit anything you can't even fit a pencil in there and uh there's no space for the shoulder rest the shoulder rest is probably like is is one of the three main things you need to play the violin so so since there's no space on the shape case, uh, you would need to buy a small pouch. You could attach to the side of your violin case and you could put your pencil, extra stuff, stuff and you could put your shoulder rest in it. So most violin companies like um, the Music and Arts company, that um, they will give you a pouch like a complimentary pouch that you could attach on the side so uh, for the latch it's pretty simple you just uh lift up the flap at the bottom then take the ring off and you could open the violin on both sides normally and some violin cases have a zipper like the cloth one uh they have zippers so the violin i would definitely um make sure not to touch the pegs at this uh at the top the black things right there do not touch them if you're a beginner because they that's how that's one of the ways you can tune your violin in case your violin gets uh tuned out like untuned a lot uh you use the pegs but do not touch them as a beginner because if even the slightest um turn can uh twist the slightest twist can change the sound of your strings a lot by a lot and i would be touching these uh smaller pegs at the bottom if you rotate them they kind of pull on the string so the string makes a higher noise and if you rotate it the other way the string uh, makes a lower noise because you loosen up the string so that's basically the same principle the peg has so and this black piece of wood that goes up from the top to the bottom uh to the middle i guess of the violin that's called the fingerboard that's where you put your fingers so i would definitely ask a teacher a friend a close friend someone who plays the violin to help you get a finger tapes put on the finger tapes you could buy finger tapes anywhere you could probably get out walmart or maybe at uh maybe at a in Amazon or something. And I would really want you guys to uh, ask a friend because please, it would help 
you so, so, so much. Like, I would probably use them for five years, and by then, you could probably memorize them. Maybe three for some people. I've been using it for three years, and I still use it because in case I do get confused, I could just look at it and start playing. So, the finger tapes, if you put it in the right place, it makes a different note. So, when you put your finger on the right finger tape, it makes a different note because the string is shorter, technically, because you're putting down your finger on the string. So, it makes when you play it with the bow, it makes a different sound. Sorry if that was confusing. Next, I want to go over the shoulder rest, pictured above. So... The shoulder rest is uh, is a piece of foam, I guess you could say, with a plastic to attach to the violin and rubber. So you just put it on your violin, and when you put the violin on your shoulder, and make sure that the violin is adjusted, so um, so you don't have to really like twist your neck to put your chin on the chin rest, which is this black thing right there. I'll go back to the violin picture to show you this black thing right there. That's where you put your chin, your jaw, I guess you could say. That's where you put your jaw. So, I so it makes sure that you can easily uh access your chin rest, and it makes sure that uh the wood doesn't dig into your um into your shoulder. So the bow, I would. The bow is probably the easiest thing to break out of all of this stuff because it's made out of wood and horse hair. The horse hair is very important. Make sure not to touch the horse hair at all because uh because if you touch the horse hair, you the oil from your fingers, you may not feel the oil, but there is oil. The oil from your fingers will damage the bow, damage the horse hair. And there's many times I have a few friends that keep touching it um like automatically uh they're not consciously touching it and after some time their uh bowstrings snap and their bowstrings just um tear away so at this bottom you can see a screw the black and silver screw that when you twist it that's how uh you tighten the bow when you first get your violin out of the your bow out of the case uh, it'll be, um, loose. So when you start playing, um, <clears throat> I would recommend to tighten it, turn it and tighten it, and make sure that when you tighten it, don't tighten it too much, because there has to be a curve on the wood. Uh, you can't see the entire bow, but there's a curve on the, uh, wood. Make sure there's at least a slight curve because if you keep the wood straight and if you pull the horsehair too much, the horsehair will snap and or uh, the bow will snap. So uh, it's best not to tighten it too much. And when you're putting it back in, inside the case, make sure to loosen it. So and other items. We would ne you would need a uh, rosin, a bar of rosin. This is a bar of rosin. I'm pretty sure it's made out of honey and beeswax and other stuff. Uh, that might not be correct, but I'm pretty sure it's made out of beeswax. So, the thing is that horsehair doesn't have much friction by itself. So, when you just play it on your, uh, play, play your bow on your violin, on your strings, the, it doesn't make much sound because there's not much friction. So when you scratch the rosin and then rub your bow on it, the particles from the rosin will go and attach itself to the bow. So when you play, the rosin will create the friction. So I would recommend for the first few months to rosin every single day. Uh, every single day to, uh, to make sure your bow has enough friction. But And then after, after some time, uh, you would probably have enough rosin on your bow. Maybe, um, maybe rosin your bow, like, for one month, one week, uh, every, for just one time every week. And maybe, uh, after some time, maybe once a month. And I only do it once a month because my bow has so much rosin on it over the years. I've been playing the violin for three years. Um, and here is 
some cloth. For the cloth, the rosin, when it goes on the bow, you uh, it kind of gets sticky and it hardens. So every time you're done with playing the violin, you would I want you guys to clean the strings using the cloth. I don't I'm pretty sure any cloth will do uh as long as it's not rough. Uh maybe like a towel, um some clothes, a shirt, um a a, a ripped shirt, um anything I guess. But I would probably try to get a soft uh piece. So and another thing we use the cloth for is to clean up your violin because sometimes uh, if you keep rosin on your violin for too long, your violin might get, uh, might like, you know, uh, the wood might uh, deterior deteriorate and uh, it might um, like send, like, you know, it might get sharp and we don't want that because if you touch it, you might get a cut and I would probably... Um, Clean your violin every day once you're done with playing. And definitely, um, definitely there's a thing called pizzicato. So pizzicato is when you use your finger on the strings instead of your bow. So use your bowing hand to pluck the strings. Uh, that's what most beginners start off with. Um, there are a few people who start off with a bow, but I do not recommend that. Even I started off with pizzicato. But when you're playing pizzicato after you played with your bow, your fingers will get the rosin on it. And rosin, like, can irritate your fingers. Rosin can um, maybe create your fingers, like, dry up your fingers. And if you have, somehow, your rosin gets onto the fingerboard where you put your fingers, left-hand fingers, uh, your fingers will stick. So once you try to lift off your finger, it might stick, it has a bad feeling, and the string will vibrate even more. So, like, it'll make a different noise. So, other things not pictured here is a, is a tuning app. Uh, in the first um, slide, second slide, third slide, actually, I talked about the pegs, right? So, on the bottom peg, the fine tuners, those... When you tune, you have to have an app that tells you whether you're in tune or not. So you keep rotating uh, the screw in the right plate in the right direction, and you keep uh, playing your bow. So when you rotate your uh, rotate your fine tuners, it pulls the string or it loosens the string. So it makes a different noise. So when you do that, you have to make sure that your strings are actually in tune. So I would buy an app for that. And I would buy a metronome. Metronomes um, make the beat, I guess. Like, they keep going and forever until you stop it, obviously. And then, you, and then you just have to make sure you follow the beat. Because a lot of people, they cannot play and follow the beat at the same time. So people have metronomes. Some are visual metronomes, some are hearing. Most of them are hearing where they just make a loud clicking noise at the right tempo. So, you would need a music stand. A music stand is pretty uh, self-explanatory. You just put some music on it, and then you, and then you adjust the height. If you're sitting, you put it low, and if you're standing and playing, you put it up pretty high. Specifically for this class. I want you guys to have something thin, but not sharp at the end. Kind of like these paintbrushes. Probably thinner than these paintbrushes. So, I'm going to use these for the example. Uh, this will help you in bowing. When you first start bowing, your bow will go all over. You won't have a straight hand. You won't have a steady hand. And this will help with that. It could help like make sure you're in a certain place when you're bowing. And two... Uh, I would, I, I would make sure to not have a sharp end because if you put it in your violin, it might scratch the violin. We don't want that. So, anyway, uh, I'll be talking about my violin setup now. So this is mine. Uh, I have my bow right here. Uh, I have a slot for two bows. Uh, at the top and the bottom, I only use one, so I only occupy one. 
and you see this kind of latch, I guess, you just twist it so it's sideways, and then you lift your bow out. Pretty easy. And uh, and this is where I put my violin and my shoulder rest. It's pr it's The shoulder rest is wrapped around in, in a cloth. And here is the flap I, I was talking about, the compartment. I put my pencil, my cloth, and my rosin in here. I have two bars of rosin. One is used, one is pretty used, and the other one is pretty new. So that's my violin setup. So that's pretty much all you would need. So please like, subscribe, and share. See you next time. Bye.